and she knows she's a production. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Is that a bit low? Yeah, that is a bit low. I'm cutting my head off. Today, I'm doing a very exciting video and I'm giving you some audio book recommendations. <gasps> so excited. <laughs> The first thing I want to say quickly before we get into the video, because I don't think I've ever actually said it on this channel. I now post on Thursdays and Sundays, so I now post twice a week. And yeah, it's usually vlogs on Sundays, usually normal vlogs on video, uh, normal video. I it's normal, <laughs> normal videos on Thursdays. Sometimes if I haven't had time to finish what I'm reading, um, the Sunday won't be a vlog. I, I always do themed vlogs as well if you're new. Make sure you ring the bell so you're notified when I post. If you ring the bell, I think it's that side. I should have learned by now, but I'm pretty sure it's that side. Um, that really, really helps me out. And make sure so you subscribe if you... <sighs> Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. So listening to audiobooks definitely changed my reading game. It stepped, I can't say that, but it like I stepped my pussy <coughs> up basically, you know? It just speeds up your reading and allows you to get to many more books than you would otherwise. I definitely use audiobooks to get to the books that I don't know if I'm gonna physically read. The stuff I read physically is more planned and audiobooks are more just stuff I pick up on a whim and they can always definitely be very surprising, like definitely pleasantly surprised. Whereas the books you'd physically are sometimes the more hyped books that you feel a lot of pressure to read and they can be disappointing, but like audiobooks, you're like, wow, wow. this is surprising. So, um, I use Scribd. I'll put a link down below where you can actually get two months free of Scribd and it's a great service. I'll definitely recommend, I don't really get anything out of it, but so. It's not like I'm like plugging it, but like you should definitely go and get two months free of script because um, it's not limited in the way audio Audible is in the sense that you only get like one credit or whatever. Script does throughout the month, the more you listen, some books you won't be able to listen to until your subscription renews the next month. Um, but for the most part, it's unlimited. So I would definitely recommend go checking it out. All of these I listened to on script. I've come along really bunged up all of a sudden. I have no idea why. Okay. <laughs> Now, the first audiobook I have to recommend, I, I just have to, and you've probably heard like a billion people recommend it, so you're like, Megan, if I wanted to listen to that already, I would have done. But I'm here to tell you, it. I don't care. You just need to, you need to read it. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't care. So the first audiobook is Sadie by Courtney Summers. Now, now, <laughs> this audiobook is a production, and she knows she's a production. We follow a girl named Sadie whose sister um, went missing. And part of the story is Sadie trying to follow um, the trail of her sister and trying to find her sister's murderer. And then the other part of the book, actually a podcast looking for both her, uh, no, looking for Sadie because Sadie is now missing. And it's the podcast is a little bit ahead of time from when we're talking to Sadie. The other part of this, which is the podcast, is a guy talking to Sadie's family, talking to people who knew Sadie, and trying to figure out where she's gone. The podcast part is amazing. It's so amazing. Like, it's so engrossing. I love, I love when it's a production. Like, so in the podcast bits, when he's talking, for example, to um, one of the women that she grew up with, and they're in her trailer, you can hear like the clock ticking in the background, or the way it sounds, is how it would sound if it was recorded in a trailer. Do you know what I mean? Not in a recording booth where the audio is like impeccable. It, you are just placed in that situation and it's so good. It's so good. So I gave Sadie five stars and I think a big reason as to why I gave this book five stars was how immersive the audiobook was. I would definitely recommend looking out for audiobooks that have a full cast because let me tell you, let me tell you, it's so good. It's so good. Like you're just listening and you're like, wow, I'm so in this story. It feels like a true crime podcast. So if you're into anything like that, you've got to pick Sadie up. And like, if you've heard people recommend this before and you haven't picked it up, let me be the final straw. <laughs> you know, the Sadie section where she's narrating the story is so engrossing as well. You kind of feel like she's standing right next to you, 
talking in your ear. The narrator does such a good job of making you feel like you're with Sadie and she's talking directly to you. There are heavy trigger warnings in this for abuse, child abuse, and it, it deals with a lot of, of heavy subjects. But the way that the audiobook is structured, I think it just does a, such a good job of like dealing with those subjects while still making it an entertaining experience. Um, Sadie also has a stutter. And so um, I've heard, I mean, I can't speak on the rep, but I've heard some people say um, that it's good rep. So if you are looking for a character with a stutter, Sadie does have one. And yeah, I just... Uh. I love that mother song. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just love this audiobook. Like it, it's one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. And there's a reason why everyone hypes it up because it's so good. Like it's just, it's just unparalleled. There is no one out here doing it the way this lady by Courtney Summers the audiobook does. So the next recommendation is, this maybe sound like a bit of a weird one, but we're going to go with it. Um, it's Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Now, rarely do I listen to an audiobook that engrosses me so much and like pulls me in and I'm so obsessed with that by the end of the book I have to find an ebook version of it so I can read it quicker because I find that when I have the pdf um, version in front of me I can like speed the audiobook up because I've got the words in front of me rarely do I have to do that I had to do it this book it was it was such a good audio book the audiobook I listened to was narrated by Kenneth Branagh who if you don't know is an English actor he's the one that looks like Ewan McGregor but isn't Ewan McGregor I remember <laughs> I remember for class once we had to watch a Shakespeare film. I think it was Midsummer's Night's Dream. I might be wrong. And Kenneth Branagh was in it. And for the whole time, we all thought it was Ewan McGregor because they just look the exact same. I think he stars in the film adaptation of this. And he does such a good job on narrating it. His accents for like the English person, the French person, the American person are incredible. Like you didn't need a full cast for this because Kenneth Branagh could just do it all. Like. He was like, guys, you don't need to get anyone else in. I'm it. I'm it. But this book, I was obsessed with it. Like, I was finding any excuse I could to listen to an audiobook. Because usually I listen to them when I'm walking somewhere or doing chores. And I was like, let me just do this chore that didn't need doing so I can listen to this book. <laughs> and it has made me obsessed with mystery books. So if you don't know Mode on the Orient Express, they're on the Orient Express. Um, Poirot, 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 I can't hate myself. Um, anyway, he's on the train. He's the detective in many of Agatha Christie's books. And there is a murder. There's a murder. He basically interviews all of the guests on the train, um, because they're slowed in, there's a very select number of people that the murderer could have been. If someone fled the train, they would have seen their their feet in the snow, their, their footprints in the snow. So he interviews all the people on the train and comes to a conclusion on who committed the murder. So it is so good. And now I just want to read mystery books all the time. In fact, I may be vlogging it soon, <laughs> but I'm just obsessed. Like I'm just obsessed. Agatha Christie's writing, I think, is timeless. But yeah, I just think this story is a bit of a mastercraft in reveals and twists. A big chunk of the book is like the evidence of this person, the evidence of this person. Like each chapter is just an interview with another guest. And you may think, Megan, that could get boring so fast. There's like 10 guests where like you spend a good amount of time going through their story. But by the end, it just builds up to a point where you're like, I think that person did it. I think that person did it. Like you really don't know. And every chapter you are, you think it's a different person. I think it's just so well done. And now I want to read all of Agatha Christie's books on audiobook. Like I've decided I'm doing it. Script has like mostly all of them. So I think for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be listening to Agatha Christie audiobooks. So that is definitely my next recommendation. My next recommendation is actually a collection of books and that is all of Alice Oseman's books. So she is the author of Solitaire, Radio Silence and I was born for this. I think that's the order they came out in. And you've probably heard of Radio Silence. It's the most well known of her books, but um, I've listened to all of her novels. They're her three main novels and then she's got graphic novels, Heartstopper, which you all know I love so much. They're fairly easy books to read. Um, and so I think you get pulled into them really quickly. If you're reading something a bit heavier, they're a really nice light, not light in terms of subject matter because she usually deals with quite um, heavy subjects, but the way they're written is very light. And so I really enjoy listening to them on audiobook. The narrators are always top 
tier. Like the narrators are so good. Radio Silence was another one where I had to, I mean, Scribd this time had the um, the ebook as well. And by the end, I was just sitting in bed like, I have to finish this book. And so I was reading it alongside listening to it. I would recommend I Was Born For This and Radio Silence over Solitaire. I didn't love Solitaire as much. It is her first book. So in I Was Born For This, we followed two perspectives. Jimmy, and I can't remember her name. I can't remember the other girl's name. Don't be <laughs> rude. Are you kidding me? I oh, swear God. to God. We follow their perspectives and um, I was born for this is basically she's a massive fan of the band Jimmy is in and their paths meet and converge. And I think the POVs really help to keep the story going in terms of the narrator, sorry, in the audiobook. I've heard some people say that they think they would have struggled to read it physically. And I think it definitely does keep the story moving along. The narrators are really, really great on this audiobook. Again, I just think it helps to have, when you have these two main perspectives, to have someone narrating each of them. I think it just improves an audiobook from the get-go. I'm sorry about the light. What can I do? We're fine. We've got the ring light, so it's not that bad. Radio Silence is a girl who has always kind of been taught that she... Uh, she'd follow a really academic path, but what she wants to do and what she, well, what she loves to do is draw And so she's trying to figure out um, Which one of them she wants to do and she's a massive fan of a podcast called Radio, uh, Radio? <laughs> University She ends up drawing for the creator of that podcast. He wants her to create um, Create animations and stuff for the podcast and in the end they meet and become friends and it's kind of their story of friendship And it's just a beautiful story. Alice Oseman does friendships so well she also she does all kinds of relationships so well like i adore her and if i could hype up heart stop in this video i would but like it's a graphic novel so i'm not gonna tell you to go listen to an audiobook but <laughs> there's just some stories that you want to be read to you i can't put i don't think you can put a, like your finger on it but i think there's just some books that are great to be read to you um, and I think that her books are one of them. So I definitely recommend going and listening to hers. So my next recommendation is The Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire. Sometimes I struggle with um, fantasy books as audiobooks because I'm always doing other things while listening to, um, to audiobooks. And so I, sometimes I struggle if it's a more complex fantasy to listen to it. But with this series the worlds are so incredibly vivid that i don't struggle with that so the way with children series um are very short novellas so the audiobooks are only like four hours they're so so short so you really should just go pick it up do it just do it don't let your dreams be dreams it's children who have gone through doors to other worlds that suit them better. It's like their world. There will never be a world that is is better for them, if that makes sense. Like it's their world. And um, they have all had to come back in many of these. Some of the stories are of them in their worlds. Some of the books focus on that and some follow them back in our world, trying to come to terms with it, trying to learn how to cope after, you know, having to leave their world, having to be forced out. The worlds are just, the, the way that Shirley Maguire does it, like you can just imagine it so perfectly. And sometimes I struggle with that in audiobooks, but this one I really don't. Also in the UK, the books are quite expensive, what they are. They're like super expensive for these really short books. So for me, you wouldn't believe it by the amount of books I buy, but I am scared to spend my money sometimes. <laughs> and so as soon as I saw these out in audiobooks, I was like, okay, I'm doing that because that means I don't have to spend money. Um, and like I said, they're super short, so you're really not going to miss out on anything, even if you don't like them. Please just give, give the first one a go, which is Every Heart or Doorway, and you will love it. The audiobooks are just incredible. I think they sometimes have, like, music in them, and I love, I love when an audiobook starts off with music, because, like, I'm just vibing, like, I love it. I love it. All his mates are like, oh, done, it's done, it's done, it's done. And you know what he did? He says, you drunk and slut. No, he said. It's like a fairy tale being read to you. It's like you're a kid again, sitting in your bed, and your parents are reading... A fairy tale to you. And then my favourite, no, no, no. <laughs> my last tip is to actually see if any of your favourite childhood books are on script. Reading middle grade or kids books, I think is a really, really great like palette cleanser again. It just, it just helps you readjust your reading and they're super quick to read as well. Recently, I've been loving listening to the Mallory Tower series on script which was one of my favourite series growing up. And I also loved, I didn't read them as a kid, but they are kind of kids' books. I loved listening to the Nancy Drew books because they were just such of their time. Like the music used in it, it just took you back to like the 1950s or whatever. And like, 
lets you live in that world for a little bit. I love when audiobooks just take you to another world and let you live in that world a little bit. And there's all these multimedia elements that absorb you in it. I think it's a shame when audiobooks don't take advantage of sound effects of music because like you've got it all at your fingertips. So I love it when books do that. So I think you going and reminiscing, I guess this is more personal to you. I'm not recommending you a specific book, but just go and check out if any of your favorite children's books um, are on script or on Audible, whatever audiobook service you use or Libby or there's there's so many if your library has any. Um, script isn't the only one that exists, but it's just what I use. That's why I keep saying it. But yeah, definitely go check it out and see if you can find any because they'll help you get ahead on your reading goal and they're just something refreshing to read. I really, really enjoy it. So there we have it. That was all of my audiobook recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below some of your audiobook recommendations. I would love to know. I always want more audiobook recommendations. In fact, my like saved on Scribd is kind of thinning out a bit. So I need more recs. So um, yeah, let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I cannot wait to see you again with another one. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.